Okay, section nine, trigonometric substitution. We're gonna see integrands of these three types now that contain these three things here, right? So that's a squared minus x squared, a squared plus x squared, x squared minus a squared. They're gonna look like that. Now, Graham, when I say look like that, you know, typically we have to do some manipulation to get it exactly like that. For example, we do want x squared. We don't want nine x squared. So we're gonna manipulate, right? You can do that a variety of ways. I'm gonna present one way of doing that. Now, the goal here is to use you know, this sort of like U substitution, but it's uh, gonna be a little odd U substitutions over here. And we'll go through that, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a U substitution some function of theta, all right? So we'll, we'll do this. I mean, we'll make some function of theta up, all right? So the thing about this over here is that we come up with these, these uh, substitutions and we'll go through them. Uh, this lecture is gonna be a little bit longer than others because there's gonna be some examples but we'll reinforce it with more examples later, right? So the, this, this lecture is gonna be, uh, I'm gonna give you three types of examples for these stripes, three types of forms over here. Let me repeat this. These problems are carefully selected to work beautifully, all right? So we'll talk through this over here and then we'll do an example, all right? That's number one, we're gonna do that at the whiteboard. We're gonna to go to number two. <coughs> we will talk through the form and then we'll do an example of that form. All right, then we'll go to number three. We'll talk about that form and then we'll do an example of that form. All right, after we get through that, which can be a longer lecture than usual, we will reinforce what we just said with further examples, All right? So let me go to the whiteboard and we'll talk through the examples. So let me do that. Give me one second to do so. You got to share, right? Okay, you're seeing my whiteboard now. And uh, the, note, the notes are being displayed. And again, you should have access to these notes as well. All right. Okay, so this one says the integrand contains the expression. All right. So let me outline that for you. This is going to be something important. If it contains this thing over here, you're to do as follows. You're to make this substitution. And then what you wanna do is make sure that substitution is on an invertible region. Well, that's something you learned about in math 119, right? Now, in 119, what you learned about was the, um, the invertible region for the sine function was between minus pi over two and pi over two, all right? The next thing that you'd be using, and again, it may not be obvious to you, but you'd use a Pythagorean identity at some point. All right, so let, let's go through it. And oh, before I go through it, I should mention that in that region between minus pi over two and pi over two, the cosine squared, when you take the root of it, would not be the absolute value of cosine theta. And the reason that the cosine between minus pi over two and pi over two is simply going to be a non-negative number. So the square root of it would just simply be cosine of theta. All right. Okay, let's take a look <coughs> at getting the problem in this form now. All right, so the first thing I notice is it's sort of in the form, but not exactly. And the reason for that is that it's, it's, it's nine X squared. So the first thing I would do is I would probably factor out a nine. Now, are there other ways around this? There are, but I'm gonna point out, this is probably the easiest thing for me to do. So if you factor out a nine, you would get nine times one ninth minus X squared DX. Let me keep going. I could take the square root of nine now, right? And that's three. So I get three root of, uh, I'm sorry, the integral, the root of one ninth minus x squared dx. So now I'm seeing this. I'm definitely seeing that now. I know what the A is. The A is one third. So I'm going to make the substitution they recommended. And the substitution they recommend is x equals, well, what's the A? It's one third sine theta. They're making that recommendation. All right. Then what are you going to do? I guess I got to make a substitution. This is sort of like U substitution, right? Just not using the letter U. And what do you get over here? DX equals one third cosine theta d theta. All right. I also want to point out to you, and I'll write it down for you. I, I want to get this thing to substitute as well. And I'll write this down for you. So what's it going to be if I'm making that substitution? I'll be too careful, it's one ninth minus, well, if I square the X, what do I get? I get one ninth 
sine squared theta. Well, you know what I would do there? I'd probably factor out the ninth, which would be a third when I take the root of it. And what do I get? One minus sine squared theta. And as we said, we're gonna be using a Pythagorean identity. And what's that? Cosine squared theta. Now remember the invertible region we selected was between minus pi over two and pi over two. So this root problem is really easy to do. What's well, gonna be one third cosine of theta. So I'm gonna go back up here and make the substitution. So you get three. I'm gonna put a little star here indicating we need to go back later to the X's. And what's the root problem gonna be? One third cosine theta. All right, let me just point out what I did over here. I just took care of this. Now what's the DX? It's right over here. And I'll write that down for you. So one third cosine theta d theta. I'm gonna keep moving along. I'm gonna factor out that one ninth. What would I get? One third cosine squared. Now I realize that, you know, maybe a year from now you won't be able to remember what to do, but hopefully that you have some local memory by just working on the problems that we give you. And so we've told you in the past that if you see the cosine squared, use those double angle formulas. So let me just remind you that cosine two theta is gonna be two cosine squared theta minus one. So cosine two theta plus one over two would be cosine squared theta. Now someone says, why would you have done that? <clears throat> Linears, linear factors are easier to deal with than quadratics. So if I, I make that substitution, whoops, I put a star here. If I make that substitution, and put that down for you, you're gonna get cosine two theta plus one over two d theta. All right, so far so good. And again, I know it seems like a lot of work. All right, this is gonna be one sixth. We have a key to look at later, and it's gonna be cosine two theta plus one d theta. I think I'm now ready to integrate. So what do you get, one sixth? Well, that's gonna be sine two theta over two plus, let's see, that would be just theta, right? So theta over six. And then we're gonna get some constant of integration. I can put down C star. And so this is why you put the star down. I want to go back to the axis. And this, this could get, this could be trouble, right? So let's write this down. So it's going to be one six, two sine theta, cosine theta over two plus theta over six plus C star. And keep moving. One six sine theta, cosine theta plus theta over six plus C star. All right, so it says, I don't even remember where you came from, but to get this over here, I just wanna go back and recommend that you have something written down and I hope you remember this over here. So X is equal to one third sine theta. I'll put this over here. So I know X is equal to one third sine theta. What else do I know? I know theta is between minus pi over two and pi over two. All right, so I know sine theta now is 3x. Let me write that down for you. One sixth sine is, well, just 3x, right? All right, now I gotta do cosine theta. Now, the way I'm gonna do it is I have to start to realize that, you know, I'm using inverse functions now. And, and to do that, I, yeah, I can just remind you that you, you probably drew a triangle just to help you out with it. And the ratio would be what? 3x, this would be one. This side over here would be one minus 9x squared, right? You choose the Pythagorean theorem. So what's the cosine of theta gonna be worth? Well, it's gonna be worth this over one. So now I can write that down. So it's gonna be the root. By the way, I know the cosine theta between minus pi over two and pi over two is a positive. So I'm not using plus or minus here. So what do you get over here? Uh, one minus, 9x squared, I'm gonna put that down. That's not so bad. Now, remember we, we selected an invertible region. So I know what theta is and what's theta gonna be? It's gonna be the arc sine of three x. We'll check the key later, over six. And now since I removed the, uh, the x's, I can put c down now. So what do you get over there? Well, I'm gonna be careful about it and mistakes happen. You're gonna notice when you start doing homework, 
that you're gonna make a ton of mistakes. This is why we give you a K. So what do you get over there? I guess two, right? And then plus arc sine three X over six plus C, put my box in this. Now, a couple ways I could check this, I could differentiate this, but I wanna be honest with you. When you start doing problems, you should look at the K and the key is not here yet, the blue, little blue area. Yeah, a lot of work. We went through all that work for you. I'm gonna copy this, pull it on the side, and give me one second to copy. And I'm gonna see how I did. All right, so I'm gonna take this. Just give me a second to paste it in. And yeah, again, we're just working through it and see how, how, how we did. And let's get a red pen out. I think I got the first one right, yeah. I got the second term right, and I got the C. Looking good. I right, us go to the next one, the next page. And next page, you know, we'll, we'll certainly read through it. It says, you know, the integrand now. And we have says what we're saying over here. If the integrand looks like this, they want us to use this. All right. And, and yet certainly you should know there's an invertible region for the tan function too. And when you took math 120, that was described as being between those two. All right. Pretty easy to do. Also something to do with a Pythagorean identity. All right. So let's go to the next page, look for the problem. And again, I'm expecting to see a squared plus a squared. I'm sorry, a squared plus x squared. Let's do it. Hopefully we see it. And I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it right now. So someone says, well, it's in a different order. It doesn't really much matter. I'm seeing that x squared plus four. That's like just four plus x squared. So they, they would say, you know, if this is the case, you're going to make a nice little substitution over here. And what's substitution going to be? Well, it's going to be x equals, whoops, sorry about that. It's going to be x equals, well, the a in this case can be two. So two tangent of theta. All right, let me, let me go through the work on it. Well, if someone's what to work on, it's like a u substitution. I guess I got to get the differential, right? So I got to put down dx. That's going to be two secant squared theta d theta. I need to know what x squared is in the problem. I'm seeing that. And that's going to be four tangent squared theta. I also need to know the root of x squared plus four. I see that in the problem. And what would that be? Well, let me write it down, be careful about it. That would be four tangent squared theta plus four. I wanna simplify that, factor the four out. So that'd be root of four, which is two. And what we left over here, tangent squared theta plus one. And they said something about Pythagorean identities, right? And what's that gonna be? That's gonna be secant squared theta. I wanna remind you that theta is between minus, whoops, sorry about that. We'll do hickey there and get rid of it. Between minus pi over two and pi over two. And clearly the secant in that range is always gonna be positive. So this is pretty easy. I don't have to use the absolute value. This can be secant theta, all right? Now granted, I, I'm not gonna say it's gonna be easy to rewrite these guys, but I'm hoping when the dust settles, it is easy. So what do you get over here? You get one, I'll be careful. What's X squared? It's four tangent squared theta, all right? And then what do you get? The square root of X squared plus four, which is two secant theta. I'll write that down for you. And what's dx equal to? Well, it's two secant squared d theta. Again, a little side work on the side is helpful. All right, remember this. If things are not working out, we're probably doing something wrong. By the way, I put my star there to remind me that I go back. I realize a lot of teachers don't do that, but I need to because sometimes they forget where I'm going. And it's like sort of like a, a, a trail that I can follow back, a trail of crumbs, so to speak. So let's go to the number first. And I'm noticing it'll be a quarter. I want to kind of reduce it. And what do you get there? Well, I guess you get secant, right? And bottom you tangent squared. And I realized for the last century you're looking at that and saying that's that's about it. I can I can't go on anymore, it's just too much work. Um, wow, I gotta do something, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna probably just simply say it might be easier for me to rewrite it. 
And I'm hoping that sines and cosines will help me out. And I'm going to put out the C. I'm just going to look on the side. If it doesn't work out, I'm not going to go in that direction. The secant on top is really cosine theta on bottom. And then the tangent squared is going to be sine squared over cosine squared. So I'm going to put the cosine squared on top then. And this guy really simplifies pretty nicely to cosine theta over sine squared theta. I will say this, the more work you put down, the better it is for you, because at least you can go backwards and say, you know, I I'm, I'm, might be doing something wrong. But I'm, I'm going to erase this baby pre-calculus stuff over here. I'm kind of looking at this and wondering, you know, where do I go now? Well, it looks a little more familiar to me, and I would make a U substitution. This one says, this is the second substitution you're making. I'm going to do this. Let's see if it works out. What's du is cosine theta d theta. All right, one quarter. I'm going to put a double star indicating, um, you know, two breadcrumbs. I have to go back to two, two, two times now. And what do you get? Well, you get one du. That's the cosine theta d theta. And then at the bottom, you get u squared. And I think I'm ready to write this down now, which is one quarter. And that's going to be u to the minus two. So u to the minus one over minus one. All right. And plus some constant integration. I'll put C double star down now. And I got to move backwards. So this is going to be minus one over four U plus C star star. Do I know what U is? Well, I wrote it down. It's sine theta. Right, let's hope I didn't make any mistakes. Now, do I know what sine of theta is? No, but I know x equals 2 tan theta. Write that down for you. x equals, whoops, I'm sorry. Yeah, maybe I could do that. x equals 2 tan theta. Well, let me just remind myself about this. And, you know, doing it, I'm going to say x over 2 tan theta, All right? Let's keep going. I can do my little triangle. I mean, I'm trying to do this, and this would be theta. This would be x over two, Pythagorean theorem, which is nice. And what do you get there? You get, let's see, x squared plus four, right? And what's the sine of theta? Well, it has to do with x over the square root of x, player, x squared plus four. Now, I hope you realize this does cover that, that range of numbers between minus pi over pi over two, because the x could be plus or minus here at this point, all right? It could be, if you're to the right of zero, it could be that, to the left of zero, it could be negative. So I think I'm ready to write this down now, and I'm, I'm gonna go for it. Again, then we'll look at the k. So it's gonna be minus one. You know what, I think I have double stars there. I gotta erase one of those stars. Sorry about that. So four, and again, sine theta was going to be x over the square root, right? I'm going to rewrite it as minus the square root x squared plus four over four x plus c. And granted, I, I really mean this. A lot of work goes into this, and we want to see if we got the right answer now. All right? So I'm kind of looking at it. I think it's pretty good. You're right over here. We're doing it right. All right, last guy. All right, this is number three now. I'll read it to you. It says the integral contains this kind of guy now. There's a third one, right? They say use this. All right. Yeah, again, a little more tough, right? But we want to make sure it's an invertible region. So then the question becomes is I hope you remember that when you did secant in math 120. They said, forget about it. Don't do it. They said, go, go, to, go to something that's related to it. But I, I got I to gotta put the, the, you know, if I put the cosine curve down, we, let me go to the back, next page because we'll be able to read the invertible region over there as well. So I want to I explain where that's coming from. So if you did the cosine curve and it took its inverse, you know, the cosine curve looks like this. I'm sure you've seen that before, right? 
So, you know, one thing you could do is, well, invertible region, I, maybe I could do something like this, but I want to point out, I wouldn't extend it over here because it would not be invertible. All right. Then the question is, I know there's an asymptote there. And then the next thing I would put down is probably this section of the curve. Then the invertible region over there, if I look at it, I would say, looks like it's starting at zero and goes up to pi over two, not touching it, of course. And then it looks like it starts up again at pi over two. Let me see if I want to do that. Well, you could, but I noticed what they did in the notes, they took pi to three pi over two. So let me erase that down. And we'll stick with that. That's what you're probably your textbook sticking with as well. So it, again, it might seem strange, but they took that. Let me put that over here for you. Well, I got to get back to the black. They took this. And that's going to be, let's see, zero pi over two pi now. And that's three pi over two, right? Oh, no, they conclude the pi. Pi works beautifully. And then they go to this over here. All right. So I, I got my invertible region now. And certainly we've done this in the past. And we just didn't do that in Math 120 for, for a secant anyway. So let me just point that out to you. It's my invertible region and Pythagorean identities. And oh, now I know why they did it. And the reason they did that, they're going to be taking the square root of tangent. So they selected that region over there. So let's just make sure you know about the tangent function and the tangent function here. I'll just draw it in a little different color. All right there. And the tangent function over here, if I look at it, would look like this. That's why they did that. All right. So what do I know about this over here? Well, it's positive in those regions over there. And that's why they selected that. Okay. That's good news. All right, we'll keep that in mind and I'll look back in the notes if we have to, all right? So the reason they did that, they wanna make sure that the square root of tangent is not gonna be a problem. And that's why they did it, all right? So let me outline that for you. And they, they want to make sure it's not a problem, all right? Okay, let's take a look. So someone says, my, my God, these are getting more and more difficult. This one has limits. Actually limits makes it easier. So the first thing I wanna probably do is, get that integrand uh, cleaned, cleaned up and let, let's just do that. And I'm seeing, I'm seeing, by the way, these are written to work beautifully. I mean, I mean you could write problems. It, it, they may look like they're gonna work, but they just never work out. That's not the intent over here. So I'm taking this nine X squared minus one. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, um, well, let's see, I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna just factor the nine out. And that would be the root of nine. And that would be X squared minus one ninth. All right, I wanna go back to the next page and we're getting that form. All right, got the X squared now. It's gonna be three X squared minus one ninth. Now again, you can keep looking back and I recommend you do the homework, keep looking back, A, C can't theta. So what's A? A would be one third, C can't, Theta, D, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm thinking forward, equals X. Sorry about that. All right. So what do I want to do? I want to see if I can handle it. And then we'll, we'll start making substitutions later. All right. So I'm going to basically look around for things to do. And one thing I want to do is I want to get the limits done first. So if X is two-thirds, right? That's secant theta one-third. I'm just doing the upper limit. So all I'm doing, just doing this guy right over here. And that would be secant theta is equal to two, which means cosine theta is equal to one-half. So what would that angle be, right? Put that down for you. So one, two, root three, not a very accurate picture, but 60 degrees, right? And what's 60 degrees? It's pi over three. 
All right. Okay, let's do the next one. It looks like one third is the lower limit. I'm doing this guy now. One third secant theta is equal to, well, it's equal to x. What's x? Root two over three. Well, that means secant theta is equal to root two, which means cosine of theta is equal to one over root two. Well, that's again, another little triangle here with a reference of 30. So it's one root two, well, 45 degrees. That's pi over four. All right, pretty simple. Let's keep moving along. And I got one thing at a time, hoping things work out really nicely. One, do I know what X to the fifth is? I think so. This is X. So X to the fifth, and I'm gonna write this down as one over three to the fifth times secant. I know what you're thinking. This is gonna get really difficult. They're not gonna get difficult. All right, you know what? Maybe I shouldn't put that root. Let's do the root in the side. I don't wanna just keep rewriting this guy over and over again. Got to get that root done, right? Something just happened there. What happened? Let me go backwards. Let's see if I can lost that. Yeah, for some reason, something up on my whiteboard there. Anyway, I was able to go backwards. I want to do that square root. Hmm. Let's take a look over here. I want to do this guy here. And see nine x squared. So this, this would equal with my substitution secant squared theta. Again, if you square that, you get one ninth, but times nine is one secant squared theta minus one. And I kind of recognize that guy, right? And what would that be? That would be the square root of tangent squared theta. Remember the invertible region that we chose, this becomes very easy, it just becomes tangent of theta. All right, let me write that down for you. And I'm gonna erase that root problem like I did before, but then I, I, I undid it, that's why it's there now. And let me get my, uh, erase this thing over here. And that's tan theta. And yes, I know for a lot of students, it's a lot of work. Of course, what do I gotta do now? I have to do d theta, all right? So I'm gonna write this differential down now and I'm gonna do this guy over here as my substitution. So I get dx equals one third. What do you get there? Secant tan, right? Well, let me write that down. Oh, I think I'm ready. It's gonna be some work. I'm gonna be circling things I wanna take care of. These two numbers here, that's gonna be one over, if I multiply it out, it's one over three to the fourth on bottom, which would be one over 81 on bottom. So one over one over 81 is just 81. That's done. Now I'm gonna do that secant thing. The tangents cancel off, by the way. And what do you get over there? You get one over secant to the fourth, which is gonna be cosine to the fourth power. All right, the, the integrations, I'm, I'm not gonna say it's gonna be, like if you, if you get stuck now, I understand it. You might say, I can't remember anything in the past. You're confusing me with new information and I just can't swallow all that information at one time. But I think we've dealt with even powers of cosine before, right? And I wanna remind you what we've done with that. And we made them into squares, right? So I'll write this over here. So cosine, I'm gonna use an X now. Cosine of two X was 
two cosine squared x minus one. So cosine of two x plus one over two would be, what would that be? That would be cosine squared x. Well, let me write that down now. Now again, I'm, I'm talking about the square, so I have to square that guy over here. So what are you gonna get? Well, two, and you get your cosine two theta plus one d theta. Well, you know what, I, I got some work to do. And let me put this down for you. I'm hoping it's gonna be easy. You're gonna get 81, quarters, it's gonna be pi over four, pi over three. Oh, I get a square back, don't I? Let's write that down for you. That's gonna be cosine squared two theta plus two cosine two theta plus, make sure I'm saying that right. Yep, plus one d theta. All right, I got that other, I got another square to deal with and I got to write that down. I know it's a lot of work. And that cosine squared two theta, all right, I want to point out what we're doing. We're doing this guy over here. So it's going to be cosine four theta plus one over two plus two cosine, two theta plus one d theta. And I, I realize for some of this, it just, it just, when is this gonna end? Let's write this down. I can make a long common denominator here. This becomes four and this becomes two. So you get 81 ace, pi over four, pi over three, and you're going to get cosine four theta plus four cosine two theta plus three d theta. All right, I got to keep going. 81 ace. Let's see, that would be sine of four theta over four, this would be four sine of two theta over two plus three theta. Limits of integration would be pi over four to pi over three. Uh, I gotta do more work now. Let's see if we can do that. 81 ace. And let's see, the sine of, um, well, let's write it down. Sine, that will be four pi over three, right? We'll do that later. Over four plus four sine of two pi over three over two plus pi. Minus, 81 ace sine. Well, let's see, that would be pi, right? Over four plus four sine pi over two over two plus three times pi over four. All right, yeah, again, I realized for a lot of students, this is killing them. So 81 ace, I'm gonna do really simple arithmetic now. I'm gonna do this minus this. So that would be pi over four. Let me see if I did it right. Four. Yeah, pi over four. Let's see. I'm gonna do simple things here. This guy is zero. And this guy's gonna be the number two. That's minus two now. Okay. I got to do the other guys. I got two more to do. They're going to be addition problems, right? So I want to I want to remember what you did in math 120. So two pi over three. You probably did this first. 180 over pi. That's going to be 120 degrees. Drew a little picture. The reference would have been 60. 
a little triangle in there, talk about the sign of that. And what would that be? Again, I'm doing the sign of two pi over three. That would be root three over two. So what do I get there? It, it, again, I'm doing this guy right here. That would be two times that, which would be just plus root three. All right, let's do the four pi over three now. 180 degrees over pi. Pi's cancel off, three goes into 180, 60. So you get 240 degrees, right? So let's see, 180, can I go 60 degrees more? And what would that give me? Well, it's gonna give you minus root three over two. So it's gonna be minus root three over eight now. We're dividing that by, I'm, yeah, minus, yeah. All right, I'm not saying I'm not making errors here. It certainly, we'll look at it later. I'll look at my key, I just hope I get it because I don't have to go back over my work. But yet the bottom line is sometimes I do have to go back over my work. So let's take a look at this, you know, pi over four, minus two. I'm gonna combine these two guys over here. So it's eight over eight. And let's see, eight minus that's seven. And I think I'm good to go now. Do I wanna multiply that out? No, not really. Let's take a look. Let's see what they got. Let's see if they got it. Well, I'm seeing, again, I, I wanna point out what I'm seeing. I'm seeing they did the multiplication. So that would give you 81 pi over 32. That looks pretty good. And let's see the next one gonna be. That would be a minus 81 over four. I'm seeing that right over there. I'm a little retentive. I'm gonna check to see if I got the last one right. And so what, what seven times, well, eight times eight is 64. So I definitely got the bottom right. But what's seven times 81? I'm gonna put this down for, I'm gonna see if I'm right. Seven times one is seven. Seven times eight, 28 and 20 and 56. Yeah, I got fifth by, uh, I got the five, six, seven. And that would give you what, root three? Yeah, everything is good. All right, everything looks good. All right, what do they do? They just multiplied it out. They, they took this, multiplied it out. All right, so I know that seems like a lot of work. May you be blessed with a job where there's a lot of work that you enjoy doing. And may you not be cursed with a job that you don't enjoy. Now, certainly I'm not gonna say I, 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 I enjoy that but I'll be honest with you, it takes my mind off a lot of things. I got to the end of that. And that's our goal, to get you to the end of the problem. Now, of course, what do we need to do now? We need to go to examples. All right, let me stop the share and we'll go to examples now.